Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to Let's Try Settlers of Catan on the Nintendo Switch. Catan is a real life board game, and in many ways, and for many, many people, it is the board game. The board game that has moved people from a world of, you know, I don't know, snakes and ladders and Monopoly into the rich and um, unbelievably amazing world of proper, interesting, strategic board games. I own a lot of board games in real life. I probably have 50 or 60 board games in my house, and Settlers of Catan is one of them. But Settlers of Catan doesn't actually see a lot of play in our house, and the reason is I have banned myself from playing this in real life with friends because it's a fairly competitive game, and... Uh, Things sometimes get a little bit of salty with it, especially with me. I get turbo competitive and turbo salty at this game when things don't go in my favor. And um, when I play this game with friends, I worry that at the end of the game, I won't have any friends anymore. So I'm super happy to have a digital version over here so that instead I'll just be cursing at either um, AI opponents, computer opponents in single player, or anonymous internet people that I never have to see again in real life. So I'm very, very, very pumped for this. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to do the first mission of the single player campaign. So of course you can play multiplayer online, obviously, but then there's also some single player stuff where you're going to be playing against just, just some bots, just some AI. There's a bunch of different things you can unlock. There's also difficulty settings over here. Um, so there you go. We can play on master difficulty. <clears throat> I'm just going to play on rookie for this because, um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get too salty. Honestly, there's a good chance I still won't win because I haven't played a lot of Catan, so I haven't internalized a lot of the uh, the strategy and the tactics in here. But uh, maybe things will change now that I got a digital version. I'm very happy to, I'm very excited to be bringing this with me on my next uh, airplane trip, my next travels, because then I'll burn through a bunch of these maps over here. So Marianne gives us a little bit of welcoming. So we're going to be playing against her and Hildegard over here. And yeah, they're both, they're both, you know, just settler ranked, low difficulty, rookie difficulty over here. And then you get your introduction to the Settlers of Catan map. I got to give them kudos for like a cool little 3D sort of environment over here. If there's a little bit of visual lag in the, in the recording, my apologies is that I have, I have a, the, I'm playing this on the Switch, but I'm recording on the PC through a little interface and things, and sometimes there's a little microscopic lag in my recording setup, but of course the game plays totally smooth over here. So, um, the board, what's one of the cool things, and one of the reasons that Settlers of Catan has so much replayability, is that when you play this, um, outside of the, the campaign, in the campaign here, the I'm pretty sure the maps are kind of fixed, but there's, um, there's a system for laying out these tiles, so you get these randomly generated maps every time you play. So there's no one sort of fixed winning strategy that that you can pursue because it's always going to be a little different every single time, which is brilliant and beautiful and wonderful. Um, so there are a variety of different tiles that you can see here. I'm gonna just go ahead and move. Um, I'm gonna use this little piece here as sort of a cursor to sort of highlight things. So you can see where I am up over here on the map. Um, I'm next to two tiles. One of them is a woods tile. This will produce, or forest tile, I guess. This will produce wood, logs, those sorts of resources that you can use to build. The yellow tile just below my little uh, my little dude over here is a wheat tile. So this is a wheat field. It'll produce wheat for, for you. Um, these green tiles over here are fields where sheep can be raised. Uh, we've got mountains over here. These gray tiles are mountain. And then finally, these brown ones over here are, I guess, clay pits or clay quarries. We get bricks out of that. There's also some ports off the coast over here um, and a desert tile in the middle that never produces anything. And that's also where the bandit starts. We'll talk about that in a second. The tiles also have numbers on them. At the start of your turn, this is a setup phase that we're in now. After we're past the setup phase, um, at the start of your turn, you will roll two six-sided dice and add them together. That will give you a number from 2 to 12, right? 1 to 6, 1 to 6, add them together. You're going to get a number from 2 to 12. The most likely total on two dice will be 7. Then the next most likely will be 6s and 8s. Then the next more likely after that will be 5 and 9, and so on and so forth. And the least likely will be 2s because you need to roll snake eyes, or 12 because you need to roll a pair of 6s. And you can see the uh, the numbers on each of these tiles. Uh, you can see those numbers. So you can see the 6s and the 8s. They're highlighted in the red. They're very common. They've got those five little pictures underneath them just to show these are very common results whereas the twos and 12 only have one pip as a hint that this is a really rare number to roll so the way you collect resources is right now i'm placing a settlement and when you have a settlement next to a tile if that number gets rolled so let's say i place a settlement right here uh, and let's say at the start of someone's turn anyone's turn they roll a 10 so uh, 
then even if it's not my turn, if someone rolls a 10 and I have a settlement here, I will produce a wheat because I'm adjacent to a wheat field with the number 10. In fact, there are a couple of towns on the board, so potentially multiple people could go and collect resources. So settlements, the big thing with them is that they do produce resources. They're also worth a victory point. Um, I believe in this scenario here, we have to reach 10 victory points. So each settlement you have is worth one. Uh, if you upgrade a settlement to a city, then it's going to be worth two victory points. And I believe it also gives you two resources instead of just one when you get that stuff as well. Um, you also, if you have the longest road, you can claim the longest road card, which is worth two victory points. Um, and there's other ways to get some victory points, in particular with development cards. We can see what you can buy down there. So those are the different resources that you have to use, and they get used for different things. Now, I know there's, this is a very deep and very strategic game in here. Um, and I, there's all kinds of different placement strategies in terms of things. Mostly, I'm going to place my first settlement uh, next to one of the most common numbers, a six or an eight. Um, and I'm going to focus a little bit on like, like wood and or brick early on. Um, just because that is a good start. Although I know that in the late game, making sure you have wheat and stone is critically important. So if I go and place here... I will be I will be next to a very common brick uh, production tile that eight, and I'll also be near a wheat and a stone production things. Those rolls will be less likely at a ten and especially an eleven, but it's still going to be possible. So I'm going to go ahead and plop my first settlement down there. I'm also going to have to go and plop a, a road adjacent to this, and we'll talk about some of these road mechanics later on. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it sort of southwest over here, away from where Marianne has placed hers. Then Hildegard will go next. So I'm going to go ahead and place a road right here. Hildegard's turn now. You know, one of the things uh, um, I, I haven't actually experimented with is how this interacts with the touchscreen. So you'll see Hild Hildegard has gone and placed a second settlement, and now I do as well. So what happens in order, so um, it went Marianne, then me, then Hildegard, we place the city, and then we go, or sorry, a settlement. Then we place a sec second settlement, but in reverse order. So Hildegard was the last person to place her first settlement, but the first person to place her second. It's a nice little balancing thing. The other thing with the second settlement is when you place your second settlement, you get all the resources that are adjacent to that settlement. So what I think I might do, I'm actually tempted to place right over here. Now, if I do this, what, what won't I have? Or will I have everything? Yeah, I guess if I place here, I will technically be adjacent to one of all the things. Um, what I won't be adjacent to is a very common wood production site, which is a bit unfortunate. But I might be able to, to balance that out by expanding later on and getting a settlement maybe right up on the coast over here or something like that. That's a possibility. It's not the greatest placement for a variety of different reasons, but it might be a plan. In any case, if I do this, I'll at least start with some wood. And that won't be too bad. Uh, it'll, brick or stone production will be fairly common, which will mean that we might be able to pursue a fairly decent city strategy, assuming I can also get a decent amount of wheat production. So we'll look into that. So I'll go ahead and place my settlement here. There's probably like a bunch of pro Catan players in the comments right now just cringing at the placement. But again, unfortunately, I don't really know that well the depth of the strategy for the game and there is a lot of it so you can see now at the bottom i now have one wood one sheep and one stone card in here i'm gonna go ahead and road um probably this way to sort of be planning on connecting my two settlements up um, in time because one of the things future settlements have to be placed adjacent to roads from now on and also yeah the person with the longest road in the game can claim a, a card worth two victory points so I'll go ahead and place it there. That seems okay. So now our, our first real turn is starting. So Marianne is... Uh, oh, no, sorry. Marianne is doing her final placement. That's going to be... Ooh, there's going to be some competition over there. So she's taking her turn. She's rolling dice. She rolled a six. So everyone who's adjacent to a six tile gets some resources. So oh, I need to make sure... Okay, so it's my turn. I'm going to roll. I got a nine, which gives me nothing. Hildegard's the only person who got anything, and it was a brick. Oh, this is super awkward because Marianne could easily cut me off. If she builds a road over here between that, that four field and 11 mountain, if she builds a road there, she's going to cut me off. So what I would like to do is build a road. But the problem is I actually don't have enough resources. If you hold the uh, the left uh, left trigger over here, this is your build screen. And anything you can build will be highlighted. It's great. You don't have to do the count. I'd like to build a road, but I don't have brick. The brick there is, is slightly grayed out. 
I don't have any brick. I'm gonna see if anyone's willing to trade me a brick. So I'm gonna hit X to enter trade mode. And I'm gonna say, what I would like is I would like a brick. And I'm gonna offer, I'm gonna offer a stone right now to see if anyone's willing to go for that. No, no one's willing to go for that. Let's try something. Um, I'll offer two stone because I'm actually gonna get a fair amount of stone. And like that. No player. I actually don't know if anyone's got a stone left. Um, honestly. This is probably a really bad trade, but I'm kind of desperate. I'm going to offer three different resources for one stone. Or for one brick. Yeah, I, 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 it's possible no one's gone in yet. I haven't been sort of keeping track. Now, what you can do is you can go ahead and trade with the bank. You can trade four of a resource for one of another. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't... Um, I don't have four of any one resource, so we can't do that. Ports can allow trading at slightly different rates. The, uh, I think it's the question mark icons over here let you trade three of something for one of something else. And then the ones that actually have an, a visual icon lets you trade two of that specifically for something else. So um, for example, if I think that I might develop a fair amount of brick, and I might because eight's relatively common, I might want to expand to this port over here next to that uh, 12 and 11, um, because then I can trade brick away fairly well. The problem is, uh, if I have a settlement over there, that settlement will only produce on an 11 or a 12, which is pretty, pretty poopy. Um, so, I mean, I can't build anything right now, or I can't buy anything or build anything yet like that. No one's really gonna trade anything that I'm really interested in. So I guess I've got nothing to do but to end my turn, which displeases me greatly. So Hildegard's gonna roll a five, which doesn't do anything for me. See, this is where the salt comes in in this game. It's very weird. Oh, okay, so Hildegard is offering, bleh, to give me stone in exchange for some sheep. Well, no, I've got more stone than I need, um, and I'll probably need the sheep sooner. I could counter offer, but most likely there's not gonna be anything great here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and decline. Um, now that might be interesting. She's offering one wheat for a sheep. Clearly she really wants a sheep. I'm betting she really needs to build a settlement. Um, or I mean, maybe she wants to buy a, a development card. That's also possible there too. Uh, if it was like, if it was clay, I might almost accept, but I'm going to decline this one-to-one -one trade for something that'll probably help her a lot. No, thank you. So Marianne's going to roll. She rolls an eight. Hey! There we go. I finally got my my clay, my brick over here, which is great. Let's go ahead and roll them bones. We got a three, which actually gives me wood. <clears throat> Sounds dirty. Yeah, th that happens every now and again. There, there's there's some. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on and keep it. Let's try to keep it clean. This is a sponsored video after all. <laughs> um, but there we go. Now I have enough material to build a road, which makes me incredibly happy because I want to build a road here before Marianne does and completely screws up my game. So we'll drop that down over there. Um, I can't build anything else right now, but I'm still going to call that a very successful turn. So we'll go ahead and skip. You can see the gameplay for this, very simple. And oh, hey, there's a 12, which will actually give me some sheep. Amazing. Um, no, she's still offering me stone for sheep. I'm not interested at all. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, she really needs sheep. It's like, And you know what? I could use wheat at this point, but no. Not on one-to-one. -one. Ah, Marianne took the trade. So Hildegard is... I actually don't know if she did anything. Uh, more production. Excellent. All right, my turn. Uh, roll, roll, roll. Chuka, chuka, chuka. Hey, seven. All right. So seven activates the robber. So there are no tiles. There are no hexes that have a seven. Instead, what happens when someone rolls a seven... Well, a few things happen. First of all, if anyone has more than seven resource cards in their hand, so eight or more resource cards in their hand, they have to discard half of them. So holding on, like just stockpiling resources is incredibly dangerous because if someone rolls a seven, you just lose half your stuff right away. It's brutal. Again, this game brings out a lot of salt. Then after that, whoever rolled the seven gets to move the robber to a hex. Now, having the robber in a hex does a few special things. First of all, any hex with a robber in it doesn't produce anything if that number comes up. Again, another opportunity for incredible amounts of salt. Um, and also, when you put a robber in a tile, you, the person who's placing the robber, get to steal one card at random from someone who's got a settlement adjacent to that tile. So, um, 
I don't want to put it here. Like, blocking a, a common number is usually a good thing. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll put it on the six. It's fairly common. It'll let me steal a card from Marianne. Although, maybe I should steal from Hildegard. She's got a lot of cards, and I'm feeling a little bit concerned as to what she might do here. So, perhaps what I can do... You know what? What if I put it on a clay? Because I have a very common clay, which means I might be able to get a bit of a monopoly on clay production and, like, be able to trade it in a favorable way. So I'll put it here so Hildegard will no longer be able to get clay from this nine tile. And I'll steal one of her cards. Because I feel like she's got a lot of cards. She's probably on the cusp of building something important. So I'll drop it over here. It'll randomly steal something. Oh, it steals one of the sheep. That just the one, one of the ones she just traded for. So this probably hurt her a lot, which pleases me greatly. Now, when you roll a seven... There's no resource production that turn, though. So, although I do have enough for a development card. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Development cards are great. They can do a lot of different things. So what I got here is I got the Knigget card, the Knight card. When I play this card, I can actually move the robber and steal resources from players. So basically, it's it's like rolling a seven, with the exception that it doesn't um, uh, steal a bunch or it doesn't trash a bunch of resources from someone who has eight or more in their hand. The thing with development cards, you can't play them on the turn that you get them. So I'm just going to have to sit on that for now, but be very pleased. And we'll just go ahead and end our turn. Do, 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 do. Hildegard's rolling a 10, which does give me some wheat. Excellent. Uh, she still wants sheep. Nope. Mm, nope. Not at a one-to-one. -one. Four. Four's come up. Hey. Oh, oh, I thought, for some reason, I thought I got the, uh, I was getting the, uh, the sheep there, but I have a road next to it, not a settlement. So Marianne's offering me some stone for wood right now. Uh, stone is a powerful late game resource, but I'm not going to really need it because I'm next to the six and wood is really potent early on. So I'm really not interested in giving her that. Um, I also don't need a sheep for it. Although she did trade with Hildegard, who's probably happy to get that sheep. All right. So let's roll the dice. We got a five, which does nothing for me, right? Mm hmm. Um, now I have that knight card. I could buy another development, but I think I will first. I'm going to play the knight card. Um, oh, Hildegard's up to eight. If I had rolled a seven, she would have lost four of her cards. So I will play the knight card here. And you know what? I don't think I'll steal from Hildegard because if she rolls a seven on her turn, she'll lose all of her, she'll lose half her stuff. Whereas if I steal something from her first, then she'll be below that critical number. So instead, I'm going to steal from Marianne. I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and block this eight sheep tile. Do that. And I'll steal from Marianne. Who didn't have much, but hey, we got a stone out of it. And that's fine. Um, so I'll buy another development card since I've got nothing else to do. And you can see that development cards are quite funky. Oh, we got another knight. A bunch of the development cards are also worth victory points. And they're secret victory points, so people don't know you're moving towards it. By the way, the victory points uh, can be tracked just above the images of people. So Marianne's at three points over here, and Hildegard and I are both at two. She would like a brick in exchange for a, a stone. I'm going to deny that. No, thank you. Are right, trading there? Uh, and she placed. She traded with Marianne and then was able to place a settlement. So she's at three points as well. Oh, there's a seven. So the robber is going to act. I think the low difficulty um, AI don't tend to rob from you. So that's good. Uh, she's going to offer me wood in exchange for a stone. I think I'm kind of okay with that. Because again, I mean, development cards, yeah. But early on, the wood is good for both the roads and the settlements. It's a one-to-one... -one. You know, sure? Okay, it doesn't look like enabled for her to do anything right now, so that much is good. Let's go ahead and roll. Oh my god, so many sevens. Um, then I think what I'll do is I'll go here, and interestingly enough, now I would get to choose. I could steal from either person, because they're both adjacent to that tile. Um, I will steal from, um, from Mary Ann, I think, because she just, I just traded with her. And maybe that's going to enable to do her to do something. So I'll steal from her. I get my stone back. Hey, hey. Uh, and maybe what I'll do... You know what I should have done here? Yes. Here's what I should have done. I should have put the robber on the six mountain. Stolen from Hildegard. Then played the knights to put it onto the eight over there. Because I don't actually want the, the robber to sit on the six mountain. Because that would be bad. Do I want to move the knight right now? Or play the knight right now. 
Yes and no. I, I really, yeah, I should have done this in reverse order because I really like having this be on this tile because it denies both my opponents a really good production tile. So I should have put the robber somewhere else on my seven and then played the knight to put it onto the eight. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold on to the knight for now so I can move it back there later on. Although it would be better to instead, you know, just be using the knight now so I could steal something. I will build a road. Now, am I wanting to focus on connecting these guys or what I might wanna do is focus on building out somewhere um, to maybe deny other people some amount of construction or something. It might not be a bad idea to expand in this direction with the plan of putting a settlement next to that five wood because I do have some wood production, but it's on a three, which isn't fantastic. Um, and if I put it there in the middle of that five, nine, and ten tile in this direction, um, this is going to give me, when I roll a ten, it'll give me two wheats which is good because I don't get a ton of wheat right now and just the single 10 will want more. And it'll also give me some more clay production. It seems like a good way to go. Let's do that. And yeah, nothing else I can build. Again, I could still play the knight, but I'll hold on. I'll just end the turn here and we'll see what goes on. The guard's going to roll a three, which does give me some wood. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, and... Hildegard wants some of my stone in exchange for some wood. I've got plenty, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> Marianne's gonna roll. She gets a seven, so the robber's gonna move. No one's losing any cards, but this will give me a good opportunity. Yeah, so she's gonna go there. She's gonna steal that way. Um, she's offering me some sheep for stone. I'm gonna say no. She's offering me wood for stone. I'm gonna say no again. Okay. And now I can play the knight this turn. But we've got to stop rolling seven so we actually start producing stuff. All right, we got a four over there, which gives me nothing but Marianne lots. Um, so yeah, I'm going to play the Knigget. And I'm very happily going to play it here, blocking that good tile from both my opponents. And yes, I'm going to steal from Marianne um, because she's got tons of stuff. And it feels like a good idea. All right, a sheep, which I don't really need right now. Because I can't build anything. That's the end of my turn. Um, can't, Not really in a good position to do any trading or anything like that. So, yeah, we'll just end turn. That's going to be okay. Hildy, what are you doing? Roll, roll, roll. An 11. Hey, that's going to give me some stone. Yeah, I'm the only one on an 11. Look at that. 11s are fairly low priority tiles to expand next to. Another 11. Ha! I'm just rolling in stones. Boy, that'd be a good band name. Um, she's going to offer me a sheep for a stone. Well, I've got tons of sheep as well. I'm going to say no. If you offer me something else, maybe. I mean, I could counter offer at this point. I could say, listen, I don't need sheep. Um, but I'll do a one-to-one -one trade for a brick. How does that sound? I don't know if she's got a brick. No, she's going to offer me wood for... Nope, I'm going to turn it down. All right, now it's my turn. I'm at seven, so if I roll a robber, I won't get destroyed. Four does not help me. Now, I really would like to spend some resources because, you know, I'm close to sort of being in the robber range. The problem is, currently, I've still got nothing I can really build. Um, and yeah, if I want to trade with the bank, I'm still not in a good position there because I think, I think you have to trade four of one resource. Yeah, it's not letting me push anything up there. If I get a fourth stone, that I could trade four of them away for something else, but what a, what a miserable rate. So we just have to end our turn and cross our fingers that... Good things happen and not bad things. A two. Oh, which helps Hildy. Good for you. Marianne. A seven. Oh, I was really hoping she'd roll an eight so that she would be denied her tile. Uh, so the robber moves over there. Yeah, I think the easy difficulty AI does not robber you, which is great. Eleven. Hey! Alright, so this is really annoying, because I'm sitting at 8 resources, so if a robber hits, I have to lose half of it. I still can't build anything, I guess... Ugh. I guess I will, um, bank trade... Swap 8 stone... <sighs> Maybe for a brick? I might not spend it right away, I don't know if I have to rush to build another road at this time. Yeah, I, I'm going to do this. There we go. 
So I could build another road right now. But I think I can probably just sit on this. Because no one's about to block one of my route, like, paths that I really want to take. I can always do it just next turn. So, yeah, we'll just pass. Plus, leaving more options might enable a little bit more trading options. A 10, that'll give us a wheat. Excellent. Oh, and look at that. Hildegard should have gotten two wood there, but the robber was sitting on her forest. <laughs> 11 gives me a stone, which is great. Now I've got uh, a little everything. Marianne is offering me a stone for one of my wheat. I'm going to definitely say no, though. I like having all my options. It's my turn. Roll them bones. Come on. Seven. That's all right, actually. Because um, I don't lose anything here. And I'm just going to move it back to this eight tile. Robber's going to live here a lot. And um, I'll steal from Marianne because she has more resources, so it feels, you know, more fair. Plus, in theory, she might be closer to uh, being able to build something with that much stuff. But if I take away something, it might not be the case. All right, so we've got quite a few options. I could buy a development cart. I could build a settlement. I could build a road. Now, the problem is I can't build a road and a settlement because I don't have another clay. Um, because I would love to build the settlement up here between the, the, the 5, 9, 10 tile, but I'd have to build a road there first. It might be worth building a settlement over between the 11, 3, 4 tile over here. They're not great tiles, but they're okay. Settlement's worth a point. It feels like, you know, jumping on an opportunity to do that whenever you can is good. Development cards are also good, but yeah, let's build a settlement. It'll give us a little bit more production. So yeah, the only place I can build it is here because you can't build settlements adjacent to each other. Um, notice I can't build it on the um, uh, between the sort of 9, 10, 11 tile just north of one of my cities or on the 3, 11, 12 intersection south of the one city because they have to be at least two steps away, which is what's going on over here. And I think it's worth doing that. So look at that. Hey, finally, we're on three points and we can potentially produce a few more resources. I can't build anything else at this time. I could maybe offer up some trades, but we'll just go ahead and end this. Mm -hmm. A seven again. We're not robbed. So it says that because yeah, if you have eight or more cards then you get robbed that way, but yeah, they're just gonna go ahead and keep robbing each other over here with this, the, the placement. A three, hey, we're gonna get two wood over here because we have two settlements next to the wood. Um, we're being offered a sheep for stone. I'm gonna say no. I have to make the offer a little bit better. I already have some sheep, so it's not it's a low priority thing. We'll roll. A uh, six gives us a stone. And Hildy does as well. Um, so we still we can't build anything right here. What I might do is I might say something, listen. I'm willing to offer up a stone for a brick. I don't think anyone's got any though. No. What about a stone for a wheat? No. All right. It's possible people just don't have them. Re I mean, you can, in theory, you have perfect information. You can know everything that someone has because you can see them produce it. But you don't actually play with your cards up. Oh, well, see, there you go. Hildegard. Now, I'm a little worried about it happening on her turn. But yeah, I'll trade one of my many stone to get a wheat over here. I prefer doing it on my turn because I get to build right away instead of them. Marianne's got a ton of resources. She rolls a six, which is going to give me another stone. And Hildegard as well. Um, a sheep for a stone. I have a sheep. So I'm going to say no to that. If it was a brick, I'd say yes. Or if she's offering me like two sheep, then sure, that as well. An eight gives us some clay. Excellent. All right, so we have a little bit of everything again. Um, I can buy a development card. I think what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to build a road. Because I'm at nine, yeah, I'm at nine cards here, so I definitely want to spend. I want to build a road over here so I can hopefully... Oh, I can't settle next turn! Because it would be too close to her. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I still might want to build a road in this direction. I also, I do want to connect my cities up over here at some point. Um, to get a, or just connect these roads up to get a nice longer road. Now, if I want to get a development card, okay, I, I will start, start off by buying a development card because this uses completely different resources from the road. So, we'll buy this, and let's see what we've got. Remember, we can't use it right away. You're plenty. When you play this card, you can immediately select any two resource cards from the bank. Excellent. Because I wanted some information. We're down to six. I could simply not do anything here. 
Because I'm not too worried about anyone placing a road in a way that'll kind of block me. Maybe I should just sit on things. And then have a really big turn next turn. Alright, let's do it. Depending on how much resource production we it happens, we might place ourselves in a position where we can get robbed and lose half of our cards. It's a little risky. Um, I will accept this because I have... I don't have a ton of stone anymore, admittedly, but I don't have any sheep at all. So I will go ahead and do that. Um, no, I will say no to the second one uh, and that as well, because then I'll be out of stone. Plus, I have lots of wood. Marianne's going to roll a five, which gives me nothing. Okay. Um, no, I only have the one stone left. Nope. Two sheep for a stone. Yeah, all right. Stone is something fairly common for me because I get it on a six. Although she just placed, I think... Uh, what did she do? It's very fast. Oh, she upgraded one of her settlements to a city, so it's worth an extra victory point. So she's at four. Hildegard's at four as well because she also has a city. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we're at seven. Let's roll. Get a nine, which doesn't do anything for me. Um. All right. Let's consider what we want to do over here. We can't settlement. We're nowhere close to that. Uh, if we got some wheat, we could build another... Yeah, so, sorry, I can't city. I don't know if I said the right thing. I can't city. We're nowhere close to that. I could build a settlement if I did buy a, get a wheat with my year of plenty. Although we don't have anywhere to place it right now. So, what I'm thinking... If I get a wheat and a clay, I can build a road and a settlement, assuming there's a legal place for it, and there isn't. Maybe I just get a couple of clay and plop down a couple of roads. Um, get to, like, the 510 intersection. Maybe that's a 2 to 1 trade for... What is that icon? Is that wheat? No. Maybe. It might have to be the way it goes. Oh. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too keen on this. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this. At least I can I can start to secure the longest road. Uh and that's not bad. So we'll build um oops. Keep hitting B instead of A. I guess there's a couple of different ways I can go around. But yeah, this is better cuz I've already got a road sort of vaguely in this direction. We'll build another one. I'll go there, so at least next turn I can build... Come on. I can build a settlement there. There you go! Uh, at five, I claimed the longest road, so that's worth two of our victory points. So I'm currently sitting at five. If someone wants to steal it from me, they have to build more roads than I do. So just going up to five means... If they go up to five, I still keep the longest road bonus, I, I think. If they go up to six, then they steal it away from me. Um, do I want to build another road? I think... I mean, I want to merge these two. This is going to be a really long road. But I think what I might do is just start building out this way to give me room maybe for another settlement later on. So it's slightly greedier, but it might be all right. I could potentially see if anyone wants to trade some sheep, but I think I'll just move on at this point. Oh, Hildegard! She's got eight resources! And she rolled the robber. So she's going to lose half of her cards. Ah, yeah. See? She would drop down to four. She's doing a little trading over here. Marianne rolls a nine, which gives me nothing. And another roll. Blam. Six. Six gives me some stone. I can't build anything here. Um, could I... Let's see if we can offer a sheep for a wheat. And push comes to shove, I'd probably be willing to do two sheep for a wheat. So I could buy a development card. So first we'll start with one. Nope. I don't know if anyone's got wheat to trade. Two sheep? No. Okay. And if we look at the trade screen, um, it's just the bank right now, right? Yeah, I haven't unlocked any any superior ways to trade anything. So that's the end of my turn. Okay. What are we at? 35 minutes? Game could go a lot faster if I wasn't talking as much and if I knew a little bit more about what I was doing. But I don't. So it's not. Uh, Hildegard... Uh, no, I actually have an excess of sheep, so no. Um, no. Marianne's turn. A 
10. Hey, there's my wheat. Oh, Hildegard just got four wood from that because she's got two cities next to that wood tile. Come on, roll a seven. Roll a seven. Yes! Hildegard loses half her cards. <laughs> nice. Oh, and I... um, No, I'll still put it on this eight. So, like I could deny her two city things, but yeah, we'll we'll draw, go ahead and drop it on the uh, this eight over here. It's still a strong place for that to be. Um, oh, Marianne has no cards, so I have to steal from Hildy. Okay, can I build anything as this? I can buy a development card, which I think is probably a fine idea. I mean, maybe I could trade. I could do a four to one trade with my my sheep. I could also actually before I do anything, I would like to offer. Well, first I'll start with one. I'm expecting the answer is no. One sheep for some wood? No. And it's possible no one has wood. I will offer two sheep for a wood. No. Okay. Fair enough. It would have been useful, because we could have we could have built a settlement. But yeah, I will buy a development card. Shabam. Ah, this, this development card is worth a victory point. It's hidden. I keep it in my hand. They don't know what it is, although they can probably start to assume after a point, if I'm never playing this card, that maybe it's a victory point. That is a nine. Which does nothing for me. It doesn't do much for most people. Ba -ba -ba, Marianne. Uh, seven. And yeah, I think on easy difficulty, they're just going to rob from each other. Yeah, thank goodness for that. Okay. Boom, a uh, seven. All right, well, I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna put it back on the sheep tile. If we can stop other people from getting sheep, then I might be able to sell my sheep at a good rate from someone. Um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll take from Hildegard. She's got three cards. Get some brick. Again, if you can remember who's got what, you can sort of be strategic with your steals, that's good. Um, yeah, I'll just end my turn here. A nine. Just one brick for Hildy, and that's all. Marianne. So Hildegard's got plenty of brick. A six is going to give her lots of wood, and then there's stone all over. Uh, you're offering me wood for a stone. Actually, I don't, I don't produce wood very quickly, and I'm likely to get stone, so I'm going to accept this. It will enable me to potentially build a road on my turn. We'll see what else we might get here. A 10 gives me some wheat, which is good. I needed that too. All right. Uh, what, I can build a settlement. Um, it's a little annoying not to build up cities, but yeah, I think we are going to build a settlement. Again, worth a victory point and does increase my production. So does a city, but we'll do this. Now, and the other thing that's interesting here is now that I have access to a port, you can see here, there, I can trade two wheat for one of anything else. Now, I don't have a ton of wheat production. And that, uh, one big part of the, the strategy, if, like if you're going for one of these ports, you want to produce a lot of it. I only produce wheat on a 10, although now I would produce two because I've got two settlements adjacent to the wheat. So that is a little bit better. Um, and what I probably would love to do is the settlement that's in that 10, 11, 8 spot, I'd probably love to upgrade that to a city. But for that, I need to collect a bunch of wheat and a bunch of stone. I mean, my stone production is pretty good. My brick production could also be okay. I will say yes here. Although maybe I should have counter-offered. Um, wait. Did you just change your mind? That's the reverse of the thing you just offered me. Okay. Oh, son of a... Hildegard just took the longest road. Uh, so she's at a six. If I build two more roads and connect at everything, uh, I will grow substantially. So it'll be seven, eight, nine... Um, no, I got plenty of sheep. And victory points. Hildy's at seven. Ten is a victory. I mean, it's still going to take her a while to get there. Plus, if I take away the longest road, that's two points. I can then deny her again. Fiverr does give me some wood now. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, and where are we at? Building a road, which, yeah. I mean, I could save it. It's not like I have uh, six cards. I might, I might fall into robber range. If something happens like that. So, yeah, I'll go and drop a road down over here. And that'll be that. Remember, I actually have six victory points. Because I have the card in my hand, but no one knows. A six gives me some stone. Um, 
I'm gonna say no to this. No, I I want my brick for potential road building. Um, I don't want to help you, although wheat would be good for a city building. A little bit more wood over there. Hey, I can finish my road. Um, yes, I'm gonna say yes to this, because I don't actually... Wheat production, I mean, I do get two on a ten, but it's a little less likely than stone. Sure, oh, you know what? No, I'm gonna say no to Marianne, because I don't want to enable her to build something. She's got nine cards in her hand. Um, I'd rather her not be able to build and then be stuck on a seven. Okay, now that's a little bit better. Sure. I'll do that. Two wheat. Um, nope. Nope. Alright. Boom. A nine. Which, yeah, nine's not a very popular square here. Okay, so I can get a development card. I can get a road. I guess I can get both, actually, because, again, they don't, they don't, um, overlap. So we'll buy the development card first so we can see what it is. We can't use it this turn, but it might inform our decision. We've got a knight, so that'll enable us to move the robber. Okay, so I'm going to build a road, and I'm going to build it right over here. Um, I'm not concerned with anyone winning right this second. Maybe I should actually just build it over here. It'll give me an option to build a settlement, but is it a good settlement? Not really. Over here might be slightly better, but I'd have to build another one to get somewhere. You know what? Let's just take the... Uh, the longest road over here, right there. Boom, done. So now I have a nine tile long road, so it beats her six, so I take it back, and actually I've got a fair lead on that at this point. So we'll end there. Again, we're actually sitting at eight victory points. We need two more to win. So either we can keep digging for development cards and hope we get there. If we build, um, if we build two cities, that would be a way to do it. An 11. Oh, hey, we get two stone, because we've got two settlements adjacent to that. Um, I'm going to say no. What I really would like to do is build cities here. If you come up with a better rate, a two-to-one trade, I might be willing to do it, depending on what the resource is. But yeah, none of that. I'm going to roll first. A ten. I guess I could have possibly put the knight first, although the knight was still in a fine place. Um, I do want to play the knight card at this point. So yeah, let's go ahead, we'll play the knight, and... I forgot about Largest Army being a thing. Ha ha ha, so there's some more victory points for me. Can I squeeze one more? Because I'm at nine. Wait, maybe it is counting the hidden card on my nine, but maybe other people can't see it. Oh, there you go. Build a city. Perfect. Um, where do I want to put... On, I'm going to want to put it on one that's adjacent to three different things. And ideally with better rolls, like with more pips. Which actually might be the spot. Because if you count all, all the pips, you get ten pips in total here. In turn, So that, you know, indicates percentage chances. Whereas here, you've got eight pips. So it's not quite as much. Um, I do want stone, but I also want the uh, the wheat. And this will give a few things. You know what? I think this is a great spot to upgrade to a city. Bring me to ten points and a victory. I, I, I don't even know why I was caring about the spots. Because all I need to do is get... Well, partially because I wasn't sure it was ten points I was going for. There you go. Victory is mine. And I do like that you get all these neat statistics at the end. Your die rolls, you can see I rolled a lot of sevens. I only rolled one eight, so like, you know, statistically impossible. But you can see the, the curve, right? The general dice stats as well there too. Overall, we did roll a lot of sevens in this game. But that's, you know, the distribution you're usually gonna find. You can compare other people's die rolls, um, the various players, and what else you got? Yeah, the game, there you go. Seven successful trades, one city built, four settlements built. You can compare. So Hildegard had three cities. And Marianne also had two. Luckily, we were only playing... We were playing on easy mode, so they didn't keep uh, moving the bandit or the robber onto my tiles, and thank goodness for that. So yes, easiest difficulty, but there you go, folks. Settlers of Catan, one of the great classic board games. Possibly, like, again, the great classic board game. Um... That uh, that really pushes people into much more interesting territory than uh, than than those old school ones that have been around uh, and are just terrible games that make people think board games are boring. Catan, again, a lot of people it's their first introduction to a non-boring board game. So uh, 
you can get it now on the Switch. There'll be links down in doobly-doo for all this. Again, this was a sponsored video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.